Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, today is Friday, praise God. You know, I always tell you this. What I love about Fridays is for you and, and, and our relationship. You see, take the weekend and go through those messages from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. See, listen to them again and again until they minister. Listen. Listen to the message until you hear the Lord tell you about it. Praise God. Yeah, that's how you know it's established. Because I tell you this. Until the Lord speaks to you about these, these things himself, you've not gotten it yet. Oh yeah, I'm telling you, you've not gotten it yet. Praise God. Oh, are you ready? Are you ready to call for your daily bread? Now listen, if you've not been getting your daily bread throughout the week, you can call everything today. <laughs> oh yes, you can call everything today. Meanwhile, it is daily. In Psalm 68 verse 19, it says, He daily loads us with benefits. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, are you ready? Let's go say, Father, I demand and I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Father, we just give you thanks and we give you praise for today's broadcast. Thank you for your glory is being made manifest. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Someone, you're feeling some strong pains on the right side of your abdomen from some very strong hooking pains that you cannot even bend or walk perfectly i command that pain to go now and i speak healing to your body in the name of the lord jesus christ be healed be healed be healed and Jesus name. Amen. And I command everything that is sickness in your body right now to go. Be healed from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Be healed. In Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Now you can check yourself right now. I'm telling you, just check yourself and bend if you couldn't bend before. Just do something you couldn't do before and, and check the pain is gone. Praise God. And I would like to hear from you. And share your testimony. Don't keep quiet about it. That's one of the ways to keep that miracle. By speaking. You see, when you speak about it, you are acknowledging God where that miracle is concerned. And some people say, I don't want to talk yet. Let me be sure uh, that it is gone. So how will you be sure? Uh, it has gone now. But let me wait for you know some time. Listen, you need to acknowledge the one who has done it now when you acknowledge him he confirms it you remember jesus he healed those 10 lepers guess what only one turned back and said thank you sir and what did jesus say to him you be made whole you see be made whole now i can just tell you that it's possible for those other ones the leprosy must have come back it would come back I can tell you that. So especially if it is caused by demons, I can tell you to come back. But you see, the one who came back to say, thank you, he acknowledged Jesus as the doer of the work. I know, you know what I mean? He, he prayed for him. You see, he, he acknowledged Jesus. And what did Jesus say? You are made whole. See, that's how it works. Acknowledging, acknowledgement, enforces that miracle. You see, it's just like Samuel. 
he kept hearing from God. God was calling him actually, Samuel, 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 Samuel. He would run to Eli. He said, Sir, you called me. No, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. Samuel, Samuel. Sir, you called me. No, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. Samuel, Samuel. Sir, you called me. Say, hey, okay. Look, next time you hear that voice, respond like this. Say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And then God, the Bible, I love the Bible. It says, and God came again and stood like other times. See? And he said, Samuel, Samuel. And then he said, speak, Lord, for thy servant is listening. Boom! And God began to talk to him. And I wonder if he, if he, if he bargained concerning what he was going to hear that night. Praise God. Yeah. And God began to talk to him about a whole lot of things. Like, whoa, praise God. Now, now, it's the same thing. Until Samuel acknowledged the Lord, it, God didn't do much with him. So God can heal your body. Yes. But would you acknowledge him as the healer? Or would you, now when you say, I want to wait to confirm, you know what you're actually saying? I don't believe God touched me. I, I just believe some measure of fluke took place. And then it's just that the sickness is, is, I'm not feeling the pain right now. But let me be sure, you know, let me be sure that, hey, that sickness is going to take that opportunity and say, hey, this guy, is, his mind is still wandering. Come on, let's go. Jesus said when the demon is cast out of someone, it goes through dry places seeking rest and finding none because it will not find. He didn't say if it finds none. No, he says, and finding none, he says to himself, oh, let me go back to the place that I was commanded to come out from. And when he comes back and sees the place garnished, you know, empty, just there, he goes to look for seven demons more wicked than himself. And say, hey guys, come, come, come. There is a place I was staying, very cool place. But man, they chased me out because I didn't have so much power. You guys come join me, you know. So, so they, and then Jesus said, the state of the person will now be worse than the former. You don't want that to be your case. So what do you do? Acknowledge God as the healer over your situation. Acknowledge him that the pain that just left you, it's because of him. Then he steps in fully and brings wholeness to your body. Praise God. Whoa, thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, we, we are, where are we now? We are looking at Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11. Now you remember we are talking about contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. The originality of the gospel. It's not one man's job to preach it, I'm telling you the truth. The only person that preaches that gospel, I'm telling you, is the Holy Spirit. And he preaches it in our hearts. In our hearts. Now, what we do when we speak like this, like what I'm doing now, I'm speaking for his testimony according to the wisdom that he has given me. See? Every one of us have an understanding that he has given to us according to the testimony. So, you see, this gospel is not a theological thing at all. It's not a thing of learning to teach. No. Come on. No. No, it is what we experience. John said, that which we have seen with our eyes, that which you have heard, that which we have handled. See, he's not about that which we read about. No, no, Barushi Agaba. He said, that which we have seen, heard, handled. So I'm telling you what I have experienced. That's what he's saying. So the gospel, you experience it before you become a true preacher. You cannot preach the gospel that you have never experienced. Come on now. That's the reason Jesus said to them, tarry ye in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Because when the power comes, who is the Holy Spirit? When it comes on you, Jesus said, you shall then be witnesses unto me. What are you witnessing? Everything Jesus has said is true. Look at me. I'm a witness. Now Jesus said, this sign shall follow them that believe. Jesus said it. And then he says, in, 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 he says, in my name, they will cast out devils. So when we begin to cast out devils, 
someone said, what's going on here? Oh, Jesus mentioned that those that believe in him will cast out devils. But how do you get to cast out devils? Because of the presence of the Holy Spirit in you now. He said they will speak with new tongues. How do you get to speak with new tongues? Because of the presence of the Holy Spirit in you now. See? How do you take up serpents? How do you eat deadly thing and it doesn't hurt you? Because of the presence of the Holy Spirit in you. Then he says they shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. How do you think that happens? Because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. So is the Holy Spirit in you? So when we do these things, we're not doing it to show power. Hey, we are doing it that the world will know that Jesus was right. You know, that's the prayer Jesus prayed in John chapter 17. He says, I pray that they may be one as we are one. That oneness is not talking about unity, like, like let's not fight, you know, let's stand together in unity. That's not what he was talking about. The, the oneness Jesus was praying to God about is that oneness that, Lord, the same way I am, that is how I pray that they be. See? So when, 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 when they see me, or when they see them, they have seen me. So, so, this thing, you know, Jesus said to Philip, he says, you know, he asked, says, show us the father and we'll be fine. And, and Philip said, have you been so long with me and you have still not known me, Philip? He that have seen me have seen the father. You know, I, I, I told you something yesterday. I said, Jesus is so alive. Was it there for yesterday? I said, Jesus is so alive that he can walk into this earth right now. And, I mean, and do stuff. He's that alive. He can just walk right into this earth. See? But hey, this is the truth. Oh, Mambra Kashavaya. Why? Listen to me. Same way Jesus said, he that have seen me. You know, you know, as preachers, you know, we, we get to just look, Jesus, you know, Jesus, can you just appear to me? You know, Jesus, I want you to appear to me. I want you to appear to me. You see, that prayer is full of unbelief. I'm telling you, that prayer is full of, you know why? Yeah. You are like Philip asking Jesus the same thing. I want to see Jesus. Lord, show me Jesus. And, and, He's there and saying, hey, how come you don't know me? Say, how? I said, show us the Father. And you're saying, how come you don't know me? Are you the Father? <laughs> you know, this is not, no, no. Say, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Brothers and sisters, I tell you some truths. If you have seen me, you have seen Jesus. What I say? Yeah, if you have seen me, you have seen Jesus. <laughs> Don't say, ah, ah, Pastor Tubo, calm down, calm down. Don't speak blasphemy. Listen, listen. Don't, don't, don't go too far. Relax. Don't just, hey! If you have seen me, you have seen Jesus. John said, John said, John said, these things will share with you so that you also, we have fellowship with us and then he says and this is the truth our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ we are in fellowship oh lord jesus we are in that fellowship hey hey do you know what it is for god to fellowship with us jesus said if he called them gods unto whom the word of god came mm. So when the word of God comes to you, it comes to you because you are a God. God will not speak. God doesn't speak to mere mortals. <laughs> you, know, so, you know, we are just mere mortals in this world. God doesn't speak to mortal beings. He speaks to gods. No wonder John said, hey, Herein our love is made perfect, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. <laughs> as he is, 
so are we. Did he say so are we or did he say so shall we be? No, no. He says, as he is, so are we. Where? In this world today. So I tell you this truth again. If you have seen me, you have seen Jesus. So stop asking, Lord, I want to see Jesus. Look at me. Father, let this truth be made known in all the earth that men whom you have called will rise up and begin to walk in the truths and in the spirit of dominion, having no fear in their hearts, but speaking the truth in love, even as you have given to us, that the world will indeed come to know that every word that you spoke, that they have read, is true and is alive even today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All oh, we receive of your fullness. And we manifest it in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, God bless you. Don't be afraid. Receive the full blessing of the Lord. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.